Hello everybody and welcome to page 10 in the workbook. And in this video we're going to start out with just kind of a discussion of the integration by parts formula here. We're going to talk about some tips as to how to how to choose your u and your dv in a helpful way. Okay, so first just a reminder, this was the same formula that we derived on the previous page. That's what we mean when we say the integration by parts formula. I'd like to make a couple of comments on that. Okay, the first thing is when you use this formula, remember that the u and the dv that you see over here on the left, they have to make up your whole integral. Think of that as your starting integral. Okay, and the dv part is always going to contain the differential from your function. In other words, if you have x's in your integral, the dv is always going to have to contain the dx part of your integral. Okay, and there I go again. I want to really try to make my u's and v's look different. Okay, and then the second comment so the idea of this is to take an integral that's difficult and to convert it into something that's easier. Ideally, we'd like the integral of v du, that's the integral over on the right here, to be evaluated directly for it to be possible to do that. Otherwise, the idea is to try to make that second integral easier than the one that we started with. We're hoping to get an easier integral. All right, so what I'd like to do now is to work through example three together. Okay, and you might see some elements of what we just discussed in this example that we're doing. Okay, so we'd like to evaluate the integral from 0 to 1 of arc sine of x dx. Okay, well, um, how do we get started on this? Okay, well, it's a little bit different than exercises that we looked before in that there's really only one piece to this integral, so we kind of only have one choice for our u, and that is to make it arc sine of x, and that forces dx to be the rest of the integral, the dv. That is a legal choice. Okay, we can do that. So we'll let u be arc sine of x. And dv is dx. Okay, and then the first thing that we need is the du and the v that go with that. Okay, so we need to take the derivative of arc sine of x. That's a formula that you probably saw in calculus 1, but one that you probably didn't use very much. The derivative of arc sine turns out to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. You might look back in your calculus 1 notes and see if you can find that. Okay, and then if dv is dx, we need to integrate dx. That's like integrating the function 1 and just getting x for our antiderivative. Okay, so those are our pieces. And you might have noticed that this integral that we're trying to do has limits on it, 0 and 1. What we're going to do is to first do the integral without the limits. We'll not worry about the limits and then put the limits in at the very last step. Okay, so arc sine of x dx. Integration by parts formula looks like u times v. That's going to be x times arc sine of x minus the integral of v du. And v is x. And du, we can see over here, is all of that. Okay, let's maybe take that and rewrite it one time. So x times arc sine of x minus, I'm going to consolidate that into one fraction and put the x in the numerator. Okay, now what's a little bit unusual about this is you might look at this and say, we just said above that we'd like the integral that we come up with to be easier. You might look at this integral and say, that doesn't look easy very easy, x over the square root of 1 minus x squared. But even though it's not the easiest integral in the world, it is an integral that we can do. We just need to use a substitution to do it, a u substitution. OK, so because we've already used the variables u and v, I'm going to choose to use the variable w to do this substitution. OK. So we're talking about this integral. We're going to let w be the part inside of the square root, okay, 1 minus x squared. And if we take its derivative, we're going to get, let's see, derivative of 1 minus x squared is negative 2x dx. And getting the dx by itself, we can divide both sides by negative 2x. Okay, and we get that. Let's see if we can take that substitution 
and rewrite our integral. So what we've got is x arc sine of x minus Okay, and rewriting our integral, we're going to get x over the square root of u. We, we called that 1 minus x squared u. And then we can see from our work that dx is dw over negative 2x. Oh, and actually, wait a minute. I'm sorry. What's under the square root is not u. It's w. Okay, let's fix that. Okay, do we get any cancellation here? We do, which is nice. Those x's go away. Okay, there's a minus 2 in the denominator that we can pull out. Okay, so if we take that negative a half out, it's going to become a plus 1 half. And we're going to get a dw over the square root of w. Okay, now what is the square root of w as a power? We can rewrite the square root of w as w to the 1 half. And further step, we can take that w to the 1 half that's in the denominator and move it into the numerator. I'm going to do those two things. And my question to you is, can we take this antiderivative that's sitting in front of us here? Well, we can, because w to the negative 1 half, that's just a power. We can use the power rule to do that integral. So we're going to get x arc sine of x plus a half. And then let's see, how does the power rule work again? We're going to take that power of negative 1 half and we're going to add 1 to it. So negative a half plus 1 is 1 half. And then we're going to divide by the new power. OK, plus a c. And notice, something kind of interesting happens here. We get a 1 half in the numerator and the denominator. Those actually cancel. OK, and one more step here. We'll go ahead and fill in what the w is. What was w equal to? Well, we see that up here. It's 1 minus x squared. OK, and so we get an antiderivative that looks like that. OK, but we're not quite done with this problem. OK, because we had limits on our integral. We're integrating from 0 to 1. So after all that work, we've still got a little bit more to do here. So the integral that we're looking at, all we need to do is to just take the 1 and the 0 and plug it in. Okay, So remind ourselves where we started. We know that an antiderivative looks like x arc sine of x plus 1 minus x squared to the 1 half. We're just going to plug in our limits now. OK, and if we do that, Okay, plug in the upper limit first, 1 minus 1 squared to the 1 half. Okay, and then plug in 0. Okay, and what's kind of nice here is that some of the terms go to 0. So 1 minus 1 to the 1 half, that's 0. Arc sine of 0. Um, on your calculator, that would look like sine inverse of 0. And you can confirm that that's also equal to 0. So this term goes away. And what we're left with is 1 arc sine of 1. Um, arc sine of 1 is actually equal to pi over 2. OK, and then um, over here to the right, 1 minus 0 to the 1 half is just 1. OK, when you do this on your calculator, it may give you a decimal instead of giving you an exact answer, and that's OK. But the upshot of it is pi over 2 minus 1 is the value of our integral. OK, so just kind of looking back at the problem, taking stock of what we did, this was a long problem. We had to use integration by parts and substitution. In some of the problems you do, you'll have to put together a couple of techniques to get an answer.